the Gateway Arch, a guide to this national park in St. Louis, including riding the tram to the top. Join us as we explore the historical significance of this iconic monument. Watch now to discover the beauty and importance of the Gateway Arch. So where did I park? On 2nd Street at LeClade's Landing. It cost $8, no cash, cards only. It's just to the north of the arch. Travel across America with me. This way to the arch, gatewayarch.com. See the plaza grounds on the north side of the Gateway Arch. As soon as you pass through this tunnel, you'll find this information board from the National Park Service. The park was formerly known as the Jefferson National Expansion Memorial. We have been there two other times, and this makes our third visit. This is our first time, though, to see the new museum. We approach the Gateway Arch from the north. It was a beautiful, beautiful morning. The arch entries this way and the visitor center, which is where we are headed, and the riverfront is that way. You can see the north pond. There is also a south pond on the other side of the arch. And of course, that is the Mississippi River. Continuing on down the trail, I can't wait to get a better glimpse of the arch. Simply stunning, wouldn't you say? Curves ahead. In front of you is the iconic Gateway Arch, the natural curve of a hanging chain. Walk along the gentle arc of the tree-lined paths and staircases. And now, just some breathtaking views of the arch from the north end. I do want to recommend that you watch my video on St. Louis, a walking tour of 4th Street downtown. I take you to go see a lot of old buildings, including the old courthouse. You'll want to learn about the history that happened there. But now we're approaching the visitor center. This is the Gateway Arch National Park. Where do I enter the Visitor Center? The Visitor Center faces 3rd Street. The doors are not open yet. Let's get in line. Great, the doors open. Let's go in. What is the process to go ride the tram to the observation deck? Well, as soon as you enter the Visitor Center, turn left and go to the Ticket Center. We had not pre-purchased tickets, so that's where we went to buy our ticket. We're going on the tram. Yay! Tram ride to the top. $12 if you have an American the beautiful pass and yes we do and I recommend that if you are going to be visiting one or more national parks that you purchase an America the beautiful pass it will support the national parks and save you a lot of money I had to peek over the rail and see where we were going I think that's the museum way back there this new visitor center is gorgeous across from the ticket center is the line to go through security you'll have to place everything in one of those plastic tubs and go through the metal detectors then you have a choice of the escalator or the elevator or stairwell to get down to the museum and to where we're going to catch the tram tour. There is a directory if you need to know where you're going. At the base of the escalator, we found this display on the Mound Builders, and I will be putting a video up soon on our visit to the Cahokia Mounds. What an interesting place. What are those mounds and why are they so huge? You won't believe it. As you pass through the area with seasonal scenes on the screens, you will be going to the museum. And what displays are inside the museum? Ones on the building of the arch, Manifest Destiny, American Heroes, and of course, Lewis and Clark, and other historic figures of the American West, and the Midwest, and of course, Thomas Jefferson. He is the one who spearheaded the Corps of Discovery expedition to the West. It started right here at the confluence of the Mississippi River and the Missouri River, where Lewis and Clark traveled West. Rivers were the first super highways. Now, St. Louis was originally established as a French city. I was drawn to many displays, but this one in particular, it's called the Bedouin, sorry, I don't know French very well, archaeological site. The last French colonial house within the original town site of St. Louis was torn down in 1875. Well, that just stinks, doesn't it? Since that time, historians believe that all physical evidence of St. Louis's original buildings was gone. That is terrible. In 2014, archaeologists with the Missouri Department of Transportation discovered the remains of three French colonial house sites, long buried underground just south of the arch grounds. Items found from the French colonial period of St. Louis 
in the late 1700s included fragments of imported dishware, as displayed here. This is so exciting. Yes, I'm going to get you up on the tram ride and all that, but let's go through the museum a little bit more. There's so much here to see. The displays are top-notch high-tech. And yes, of course, there's this whole section on manifest destiny. Destiny or design? What would you pay for the Louisiana Territory? So much information. You could spend hours and hours in this museum. It's very well done, but I thought the other one was fantastic too. Not only high-tech displays and information boards, but also real artifacts. That's the best part. Now, St. Louis was put on the map by the Mississippi and Missouri Rivers and the steamships. As I mentioned, the rivers were the superhighways of that time. The bustling levee was the heart of the city. There was a great fire that reshaped the waterfront. And what's interesting about this fire is that almost every major city in the United States has a fire story. You'll find that a common theme when you look back in the history of all major cities in the United States. From Houston to San Francisco to Chicago and here in St. Louis. Pandemonium on the wind-whipped night of May 17, 1849, the steamboat White Cloud caught fire at its mooring just north of here. As the wind drove the flames, the steamboat Edward Boats started burning and broke loose, torching other boats as it drifted south. Bales of hemp and other cargo on the landing burst into flame. Fire jumped across the levee, igniting riverfront businesses, warehouses, and residences. It threatened to consume the entire city. The fire destroyed the heart of the city, the riverfront business district, at the height of its importance. Insurance claims totaled over $40 million in damages. Not only did the flames burn down buildings, but they halted business activity. First the fire, then a deadly epidemic. This display had all kinds of great information about medicines of the time. In 1849, it was estimated that at least 4,500 people died of cholera in St. Louis out of the population of 63,000. The cholera epidemic wiped out about 7% of the city's population. And then the Gold Rush pioneers carried cholera westward from St. Louis. It was was the single biggest killer of immigrants on the overland trails. As I mentioned, you could spend hours there, but plan to spend at least one hour in the museum to get a cursory view of what is offered. The 9.30 is boarding now. We're on the 9.40. We've got six minutes. Let's go look at a little bit more information in this museum. 1930 to today, building the arch. This was also an exceptional section of the museum. Architect Aero Saarinen reshaped the field of architecture with his daring designs. The Gateway Arch Project launched his solo career in 1948. As with the arch, his designs often required state-of-the-art engineering. There was a competition, and he won the Jefferson Memorial Arch, St. Louis, Missouri. I like that chair, too. Items included in the displays was the 1959 ceremonial shovel, an arch electrician's hard hat, a lunchbox, used by an iron worker, a scale model of the tram car, and so much more. What is the tram like? And will I be claustrophobic? We're going up the north leg. It's the north tram. Ride to the top. It's 934. They're accepting tickets in one minute. We've got our tickets. We're going to be yellow tour, tram car number eight. This is our boarding pass. To the top. Tour guides will provide directions throughout the process. They are happy to answer your questions. And of course, I did have a question. Headed north. Our tour guide gave gave us a little breakdown on the different things and events that happened during the 60s, during the time that the Gateway Arch was being constructed. It was at this time that we had to stand on a circle with a number eight because that was our boarding pass tram car number. It's a flower power kind of thing, isn't it? I like it. Well, it's the 60s and these are the entrances to each of the tram cars. We have to walk all the way down to the bottom because we are tram car number eight. We made it. We're about to go in. It's okay. I have to tell you, if you are claustrophobic, you might want to not do this. While you're waiting, they show films across the doorways. Talking about how the trams work and how they wouldn't work. The tram is a combination elevator, escalator, and Ferris wheel. That sounds like fun. It is fun. I hope you can do it sometime. This will be our third time up. The ground was broken for the Gateway Arch in 1961, and it was completed in 1965. Okay, we're about to go in. Looks a bit space agey, doesn't it? Very simple and sleek. Here we go. No turning back now. We can do this. This is fun. Uh, the door's about to shut. It's now or never. Wow, the doors have glass in them now. I don't remember them having glass before. You can watch 
watch out the glass doors and see the inside of the leg of the arch. This is fabulous. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. Okay, we're at the top. And we, since we're at the bottom, then we are the last ones up. What can I expect to see from the observation deck? Welcome to the top and look at these views. Across the Mississippi River, all the way to the Cahokia Mounds. Gateway Arch Facts. This monument is a symbol of the role St. Louis played in westward expansion during the 19th century. The Gateway Arch is 630 feet tall and 630 feet wide. The Gateway Arch is designed to withstand earthquakes and lightning strikes and designed to sway up to 8 inches in 150 mile per hour winds. One lady I heard talking said she wouldn't go up there because she saw it swaying and she was not about to go up. It wasn't swaying that day. I mean, at a different time. There are 1,076 steps in each arch leg. Those aren't accessible to the public. I guess in an emergency they might be. On a clear day, visitors may see up to 30 miles in either direction. Construction of the Gateway Arch began on February 12, 1963, and the final piece was put in place on October 28, 1965. I love seeing this shadow of the arch across the plaza. There are signboards up at the top that tell you different things that you're looking at, like the old courthouse, the United States Courthouse, the St. Louis Union Station, City Garden. The building to the west with the green copper dome is the old courthouse. It was completed in 1862. That's a hundred years before the arch. The National Park Service preserved the site of the historic Dred Scott case and where Virginia Minor sued to achieve voting rights for women. Have you watched my video on Susan B. Anthony? If not, check it out. The link will be in the description below. I guess it's getting to be about time to go back down. They give you plenty of time up there. Let's head back down. And since we're in tram eight, we're first down the steps. Remember, we're in the north tram. They say it's 63 degrees. When we were here before, it was so hot. And I was telling the ladies how hot it was the last time we were there. And they said, yes, if you get there in the summer, it can be really hot up there. Back to tram eight and back down. <laughs> Number eight, where do I get my park pass stamped and is there food and restrooms? Of course there is. I found this sign in the restroom stall. I thought it was funny. So funny I wanted to share it with you. Only flush toilet paper. We'd hate to see those shoes get ruined. I don't want my feet to get wet. I have on flip flops. Not worried about my shoes. And to the left of this gorgeous relief is where you get your park pass stamped. And back behind there is a cafeteria. What else is there to see nearby? Let's go outside and see. Don't you just love this view of the courthouse as we exit the visitor center? There is so much to do in downtown St. Louis. And I focused in on some St. Louis history. I take you on a walking tour of 4th Street downtown to see some old world architecture. You'll want to watch that video. The link is in the description below. As we walked out, that's what we went to. Was first stop was at the old cathedral and the courthouse and the Federal Reserve Bank. Back to the parking lot at LeClade's Landing. Flip flops on the ground and classic road trip. Hope you enjoyed your time at the Gateway Arch and the great tram ride. <laughs>